Oh damn, this band's legit. Are they signed? Oracle, per wait, you're you're independent? You're independent. You have singles that have like over a hundred thousand streams. That's fucking sick. That's uh actually sick. Um, done. It's available on independent. All right, here we go. All right, so there is a track breakdown with all the lyrics here. Um, sweet. Um, probably I I could probably show these lyrics. Hold on. Might take a little bit of uh, getting creative here. Figure this out. <laughs> this is, this last request is stuck in that song is stuck in my head. The one we just listened to is stuck in my head. That's so fucked up, dude. That's not right, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, wait, I can't do that. Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, we got album time. Woo, debut album to be specific. Uh, but that being said, I might have been paid too little to listen to the whole thing. I know. We're penny pinching. But uh, you'd have to send an extra $70 for the entire album. Uh, but that being said, we'll listen up to whatever, you know, if, if that's intentional, and so be it. Hey, Brad, this is my first album, Deceivers. It's available on Spotify, attached as a Google Doc with lyrics and context behind the production and meaning of each song. Sweet! All right. Uh, hi, Brad and Chad. This is my first album called Deceivers. Uh, I look forward to your review. Your words in the past have helped me push myself as an artist, so uh, don't worry about hurting my feelings. Also, Brad, uh, don't worry about chat roasting my music. I have autism and don't adhere to friendly fire. Okay. All right, first song, Shadows uh, Maw. The song is about inadequacy and loss of in, uh, innocence. People you interact with uh, make up who you are, and some will even paint their trauma onto you, reshaping how you perceive yourself. As human beings, we're social creatures, so I was constantly trying to find peace in the groups I encountered as a young age. Thus, I lost sight of my soul and sense of self. You could even say you lost your way again. All right, here we go. amazing i looked away for a second i have absolutely no idea where we are in the lyrics isn't that funny it's like seeing the rest of the album by the way oh he did oh thank you thanks for letting me know all right cool i gotta go back i actually looked away for literally a second oh there it is Cleans. Oh no, okay. I'm gonna be honest, I kinda love the edge of this. Um I I, I figure if you're gonna go this over the top, you know, there there is always a risk to it that you know might make it feel a bit tongue in cheek. You know what I mean? Uh almost like a parody. 
Uh, but I also feel like a lot of people are afraid to just go 110% in it. Uh, and I feel like it actually matches the intensity of the songs. Uh, if anything, it keeps me interested in what's going on, you know? So I actually, I, I respect the upfront, uh, again, almost ridiculous nature of this. Wow, Ben. Hey. Dex is here. I'm curious what Dex thinks of this. Close Hunter as well. Vincer sometime. I don't know if it'd be too popular. There's a lot of albums I kind of want to just save for listening to on my own. If I make everything something I listen to on stream, then I don't know. It, it, it kind of makes listening to music feel somewhat joyless. My Enough Now is a fucking amazing way of ending it uh, as well uh, on that line. But here's the thing. Um, it's so extreme. It's so animated in terms of its delivery, but I also feel like it comes off less like, let me just be a gimmicky, you know, need to impress the audience kind of uh, performer and rather a I, I want to be expressive and really show the intensity of these extremely as you can say edgy lyrics um, and I think it sells them really well um, for me I think that there are some moments where the electronics don't sound great uh, where they honestly sound kind of cheap and it's very hard with electronics especially music like this to make it actually fit the atmosphere um, because you can have synths and stuff that are like reverbed out to oblivion that just don't sound like they're in a natural environment. And I feel like that's probably my biggest issue with this song is some of the background instrumentation is just honestly kind of weak uh, in general. But uh, I also feel like there's just a lot here that works. Um, I can't say that I'm loving it. But I also feel like there's more that I love about it than what I don't love about it. This is actually pretty impressive. But it's impressive in a way where, as of what I'm listening to right now, I can say, this is cool. I'm not necessarily sure I'd return to this, um, but I'm getting a good experience. I'd give it a six. Read Big Sleepy's Last. Electric parts are my guitar. Really? It's not a synth? Well, what about this part? Oh, it is a guitar. Well, that part, what about here? Oh, that is a guitar. Well, huh. I didn't even notice that. I guess it makes sense. It's very processed, but once you kind of pick up on it, it's not... Oh, that's, that's not terrible. Okay, yeah. Didn't hear like any sound? Yeah, it's got to just be the processing. I think the same problem applies when it comes to reverb, but... Um, I don't know. Once you are able to identify what's going on, it's a little bit better. Valley of the Flies. I've always found, uh, I've always had a safer complex. Due to this, I involved myself with bad company in an effort to bolster my self-worth. In this song, a man creates a portal to hell to save a girl he loves uh, because he has no way of finding her or navigating through hell. He has become trapped within. 
By the, uh, by the end of a song, or the song, a demon mocks him for his foolish attempt to save someone who has put themselves into hell. Long story short, you cannot take from hell that which had walked into it. Ooh. Wait, that's fucking sick. That's, that's so cool? What the fuck? Oh, wait, wait, okay. Valley of the Flies. Now that's a synth. That's a synth, right? Oh, one thing I want to mention. I know. I'm sorry. I'll restart this song. But there were actually um, some really amazing melodic licks in the uh, previous song that I also wanted to make a mention of. Um, like some moments where I just thought that the sound was really rich, uh, or, or not, not rich. I, I think it's that, that is not the word I was looking for. What I was trying to say is like the melodies are very like captivating, uh, but yeah, anyways. Okay, so Fade out is so unnecessary, though. Um, I, I feel like what you have here is so riveting and disgusting that a fade out really it doesn't feel like the curtain closer it needs, especially since it's such a tragic, uh, you know, finishing thing. I, I don't know. I, I definitely think it needed an actual, like, vroom, you know? Weak fade out, yeah, but uh, I like the rest of the song a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Um, I think Valley of the Flies is not only conceptually fantastic, I love the writing here, I love how it's poetically presented, but also uh, with the guide of what it means actually makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it doesn't just feel like some nonsense made up after the fact. No, they, this really feels like a 
Dissension into Hell, I think the sound complements that extremely well. Um, yeah, I think there is still some growing room here. Um, but, like, this is so animated, so immersive. There are some moments here where it genuinely had my jaw on the floor. Um, this is, I'd say, very impressive and a step up from the previous track in general. I even like the synths here. I think they add to the atmosphere and everything about this actually worked like a well-oiled uh, machine. Give it an 8. Very good song. As a guitarist, the sound made me smile a whole lot. The background orchestra never sound, uh, sounds sounds never overdue. Yeah, it just adds atmosphere, exactly. Like, it understands that it is kind of like a synthetic orchestra that is just adding sound. But if you put too much focus on that, then it does start to feel plastic, which this never really does. So, yes, I agree. This is, uh, this is great. All right, next song, un uh, Unfeathered. Addiction is another room that promises bliss in exchange for your soul. I struggle with my own vices, uh, but be it gambling, pornography, substances, or eating, uh, that can destroy you in their own way. Hmm. Are we doing well? Hey, thank you, Ooga Booga. Doing fantastic. We're listening to a pretty interesting album right now. make another mention here um you might notice how there's been no clean vocals on this album so far okay none and yet at the same time it still manages to have moments of beauty and versatility isn't that crazy wow it's almost like you don't need clean vocals huh who would have known <laughs> it's imagery on this is actually so good oh is that an issue uh, probably but we'll figure it out don't worry Pretty common. on streaming as long as the queue yes and probably longer i think it sounds great in headphones there's something about the sound that really hugs instead of like you know repulses and that's kind of a really good sign for metal
Hug is a very friendly term in this context. I think it's a pretty accurate term. It might seem absurd, but I mean, the more you think about it, it's like there is metal that is just unlistenable because it doesn't know how to hug. Never learned how. Unfeathered has some really great stuff about it, but I think that it's one of the tracks that I appreciate for what it does, but I don't think it steps outside the boundaries enough from these other songs, and I think it comes down to just basically like a starting... Like, because it's your first album, you're going to have sometimes songs that aren't as interesting as others, you know? It's just kind of part of it. Um, even with this track, where I feel like the the writing is great, um, I, I love how detailed it is about these different ideas of addiction and how it truly feels like a suffocating suffering um, in the same way as the previous track. Um, but it's just that. Uh, I, I feel like the sound of suffering right now is kind of a predictable one uh, where there's not many twists and turns once you kind of understand what to expect. And that's just kind of it for me right now. Is It's cool. I like it. But I think that there's even more in the tank. I think that there's even more that could be explored here. So um, for me, this song is like a six plus seven minus. Are the drums real? They sound real. Next song, Glass Archer. Um, the Archer is the name of a horse constellation. A horse is perceived as a sign of wealth and status. If, if you could afford a horse, you could afford a lad for it uh, to roam. Food for it to eat. Uh, stay for it to sleep in a truck carriage to take it with you on road trips uh, a glass horse would be seen as uh, beautiful at first glance but anyone looking at it when it isn't in blinding light can see right through it as uh, and into its grotesque organs on top of that it's fragile fresh uh, fresh flesh makes it difficult to maintain when under stress finally the glass archer has a scorpion tail to protect itself from being shattered It'll even sting its owner at times. Damn, man. Like, the, the wow. Shit is crazy. You feel like addiction is an overdone topic in music? Not when it's done like this. Not at all. Like, this isn't, God, I'm so tired of alcohol. No, it's like drawn to a room with sweet black vicious walls and basically saying my skin peels. Only when my, I consume the walls, my pain disappears. You know what I mean? Like, that to me reads as if I know it's about addiction, it's great to make that connection, but it's badass even without knowing that, uh, knowing that there's like, like that to me shows that like, if there's one, I know I struggle with drugs. Exactly. Oh, they're not drums. They're not real. Well, they sound pretty damn good. Those are MIDI drums. They're made on a MIDI map. That's actually extremely impressive. Huh? I think I hopefully with this album though you'll get a real drummer now I know you can you know construct something pretty well with a midi map and whatnot but I, I feel like having someone in the moment able to feel something and create it uh you know there there is an electrifying feeling to that that you can't really replicate in post um so I will say that like that is probably one of those things to like look into you know for the next project is like this shit is working out. You clearly have so much skill, but definitely don't be afraid to reach out. Um, especially if you are overworking yourself to make something like this. You know what I mean? It's going to make it easier for you to focus on the things uh, that you're best at and have someone else be able to, you know, take some of the weight off. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Next song, uh, Glass Archer. in a world. What, Lights Your Fit with Swan's album? It's not mine, but I can see where you're coming from. Oh, man, bar. I mean, the drums sound so good, though. I mean, I'm impressed, regardless.
Damn girl, you found it. Really bad. Except SoundCloud. Um, there's certain instructions you gotta follow for it, but yes. If you didn't follow the instructions, it won't show up on the queue. You alright if I use a drum break sample to make my own drums? Why would I care? Yeah, um, well, what this song showed me after knowing that, you know, the drums are basically MIDI mapped is that, y look, you, you nailed it. Like, they sound really fucking good. Like, the drums, I have no problem with. In fact, I'd say that I have an issue with other small things here. One, the breakdowns are no longer exciting to me. Um, they're predictable. But that being said, it's not just all about breakdowns on this song. One of my favorite things is I love the formatting of the, the chugging. The breaks between each line, I feel like it really builds suspense and intensity. Um, that being said, uh, things that I think the song can improve on, simple as this. I know it's easy to make a song where you have uh, a synthetic choir in the back, but can you imagine if, like, you got a real motherfucking choir, all right? Like, doing some crazy chants over this, it would feel like some Four Horsemen level shit. Alright? I just can see a way where this can feel even more terrifying. Because I think that that would be the strongest thing you have. Is, if you can make an album like this, where it's not just the writing, it's the atmosphere and everything about it that's honestly making me spooked. Um, then I think that you would really have something amazing on your hands. Uh, right now, what I think you have is the foundation of that, uh, but an insane amount of potential to just basically tweak a few things to make something that is, uh, has me shaking in my boots. Six. Really good song. Um, just can see a lot more with it, and it's kind of hard not to see uh, the potential in something like this, so it's literally knocking points off because I think it could be even better. What started as fun, uh, as a fun self-project developed into something bigger, this wasn't going to be on the album until I released what I had here. Initially, this is a reinterpretation of the classic Yo uh, Yoko Ono. <laughs> It's gonna rain! Oh shit, wait. Actually though, while I was working on it, my grandfather was diagnosed with cancer and passed away a few months later. What was something I was making for memes turned into a song about accepting grief and loss. We are like trees, it's gonna rain, and I'll help you grow. Wait, actually? Wait, that's kind of sick. <laughs> that's kind of sick. Wait, that's actually awesome? What the fuck? All right. It's gonna rain! Life gives you a bowl of pits. You really enjoying this album? This shit is cool, dude. Like the coolest thing anyone's ever sent. It's pretty sick. 
I, I will say, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this. It's literally a trap drum pattern, by the way. Remember. Rain is a cool outro to a song that doesn't exist. This is a song that needs build-up, not just a payoff. Um, I, I feel like this is the kind of song you put here if it's a, a demo tape where you're trying to show people what you can do. Well, it does have emotion that doesn't build on it, um, and as a result, I think that it's an unfinished sounding song. It's a shrug, especially with the other songs feeling like journeys. This one stands out specifically as one that doesn't necessarily have that. Um, still sounds good, though. Might be one of the best album submissions ever. It's one of the most interesting self submissions I've seen in a minute. Just like in terms of albums. Like I, I Harvesting Death's Embrace. Like, like I'm having so much fun with this. Even though I don't love the project. Um like you gotta understand something, Oracle Spectres. Like what what you sent me in is a genre that I am usually so close-minded to and rarely find much solace in, yet alone when it's just one person pulling something together. Um, you have surpassed expectations in a way that most people could not. So, um, you know, take everything I say as like a, uh, I can't wait to see what's next kind of, you know, thing. So, yeah. Harvesting Death's Embrace. Death comes for us all. Uh, however, there are those who see our suffering as business opportunities to drain our pockets. Customer service? Coffins are more than cards and ceremonies, extravagant yet disconnected. The final lies on the, songs, uh, on the song reflects everything that needs to be said. I see. Mom! Mom! You need to... Mom! For the instructions, I put a link in the message, is that it? You have to put a YouTube link in the media share area to be added to the queue, but... We'll probably still get played. Used to exclusively listen to music that sounds like this. This is up there with major label stuff. It really is. I agree with that. on your own time. It's fair. 
I mean, neither would I, so... Enjoying this reaction, by the way. Uh, who's the guy who sent this in? Where'd he go? He disappeared. Big Sleepy. This has been a really fun one for me, too, so I've been enjoying it quite a lot. Just talking about it. Very impressed with this being solo produced. Oh my god. Harvesting Death's Embrace kind of picks up uh, some of the pieces that I was hoping for with some of these other tracks, as I think that this song is uh, genuinely damning and terrifying, as if it's placing a, a, a hex on deceivers. Um, and yeah, it is actually really convincing. It's believable. And again, it, it just feels so rotten. Fantano put Backslide in the worst tracks of the week. I saw that, but I also feel like there's context that I kind of picked up with the song that I really enjoyed as someone who knows a lot about the band. So it's like, I don't know. Like, my enjoyment of it comes down to like, oh yeah, the music video and the lyrics, and like, it all just kind of connected as one big experience for me. And I, I liked how it sounded too. I, I thought it worked really well as a song. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't fuck with it, but also at the same time, I'm not that surprised. Because uh, I've been, unfortunately, subject to this band for so long that I kind of, uh, I just get what they're doing almost naturally, and it actually kind of sucked. <laughs> uh, yeah, great song. Smiley Ball. I didn't say that already. That was a really good one. Sun Messiah. In this track, a man is taken from the water by another, uh, by another falling into it. Uh, the water-soaked man was helped by a man that claims to be the Sun Messiah. With his warm touch, he invites the man to join him on a pilgrimage to save more uh, from the water's cold grasp. The man is given the abilities of the Sun Messiah and is sent back. Do you read books, by the way? This comes off like uh, writing and lyrics from someone who actually reads books. That's why it's too, uh, too big brain for me, I think. He's sent back into the water to save more. He finds someone swimming about the water and attempts to save him. And his attempts to grab, he fa he fails and soldiers off the other man's hand. Upon returning to the surface, though, some Messiah says that there will be those who have chosen to make the ocean their tomb. That if they choose to deny the sun, they are, uh, they are their enemies and will be wiped out. You're dyslexic. <laughs> eh, you're like me then. Audio books. All right. Uh, they chose the night of the sun, they are their enemies, and they'll be wiped out. The man reels back in hearing this and denies the sun messiah's teaching, choosing to follow the sun on his own path instead of the one he was taught. The ocean is uh, life, it's cruel and uncaring. In the midst of our suffering and despair, religion will want to save us. Uh, if you ever find that the teachings warrant you to create your own path, follow God. Uh, I have... Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Wow. Dude, I like just even reading these synopses. Like, I've gotten... Documents like this where they've been like really long and just like 
not worth reading. This has been a fantastic read. This this is such a good yeah, I'm sorry. This is literally such a good request. Like I I'm so lost in the experience right now and I'm so interested in everything that's going on. I'm just like like this is so cool to me. Like this this is sick. All right. There's people that grind, and there's we the best music who make history. Here's the awful story. <laughs> Sending books for you to read on stream? Hell no. Raw man burn. Actually, I gotta be careful. I've been listening to this album really fucking loud. That's how you know that it's really well mixed. Like I haven't turned it down once. Like that's such a good sign for this project. Like genuinely. Impression on this one actually is a little tough, but I'm still enjoying it. You wanna go study? See you, Ben. Yeah, mix on this one's a bit rough, but it's fun. What you know about rolling down in the deep When the rain goes numb, you can call it mental freeze Odwin stream? I got a message, I haven't done this Long as the sound, it's 30 minutes. It's almost over. It does feel longer, though. There's a lot of material here. A lot to digest. You know? Impressive. Um, Sama Sai is my least favorite song. Uh, while I do love uh, the synopsis of this, and I thought the story was quite interesting, I think that the sound of this one is just the, the first time where the compression, um, honestly, was really bad. Uh, where the mix on this one did not work, as when everything was pummeling 
Uh, it, it simply was just too much. It didn't sound good. Uh, so for that reason, um, yeah, not as fond of this. I'd give it about a four. It just comes down to the sound. I think everything else about this is pretty cool, but, you know, it's just a bit of a miss. Just just a bit. Just a bit for me. Final song, Void Sayer. Not unlike Glass Archer, the Void Sayer is all about fakes. Instead of uh, being about looking good, it's about inspiring and caring uh, to gain something in return. They prey upon people who are in need by feeding them a simple little sweet quotes uh, and do as much as a screen door to a submarine. Wait, I heard that recently. An AI said that. I originally compared uh, this attitude to Melanie Martinez, but I think it's more like the dozens of YouTube channels that'll make videos like racist, racist Karen attacks young black boy. What happens next will shock you. It's not about teaching anything real. It's about getting attention in the uh, long run. Your money. Yeah, it's a good thing that I don't do that, you guys. I'm, you know, see, I'm, I'm one of the good, I'm one of the good YouTubers. You know, I'm not all into that like money stuff. You know, I've, I would never. So yeah, no, I totally. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Literally got paid to listen to this. What do you mean? What? Um. Yeah, but like I'm giving good commentary. You know what I'm saying? Like, once. Oh, I gotta call it one sec, guys. Oh, is that? Wait, hold on. What? Also, oh, there's lyrics on this. No. Oh. That makes my life easier. Whatever that was, that was actually just a total export error. You guys think Fantano is going to give the new blade? So you increased your score quite a bit? Yeah, even Twitter was pissed off because I liked the Blade album more. Went from a 3 to an 8. <laughs> it's a small increase. Will they do other collaborations on topic videos and just hide mine? Maybe. Funny how quickly the rating jumped. Oh yeah, I listened to it like four more times after the stream. And I enjoyed it more with each listen. It was great. It was such a good time. You give the sound a 9.4, I'm very happy. I've ever uh, visited Fab Lane. No, I'm not yet.
Cold Visions might be his best work. I actually think it is. I think Cold Visions is his best work. It's crazy to think, because I went from, this sucks ass, dude. Oh, wait, no, this is great. Yeah, those guys. Oh, welcome to Jake. I think I've heard of him. Office door just open. Void Sarah, I like it uh, conceptually once again, but I don't think this is a great closer. Um, I just think the sound of it is not the grand uh, hellscape and, again, damning statement that it was trying to be. Uh, it, it doesn't really wrap things up in the way that I feel like this album needs, which is, again, with how big everything's been, I think it needs to be even bigger. I think it needs to actually just, like, overshadow everything and just take over the whole project and leave a strong impression. In my opinion, Void Sayer is fine, but not the strong impression leaving track this song or this album needs. So it's a shrug for me. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Deceivers by Oracle Spectre. And I'm going to say this. I don't love this album, but I loved listening to this album on stream, hearing everything about it. Um, and the reason being is, listen, this is the best advice I can give you. Oracle Spectre, what you have created, is essentially something that if you are ever looking to move forward in this business, you show people this. They will be impressed, just like I'm impressed and they will take you seriously. You know composition, you are a fantastic writer, and I'd be shocked if people didn't want to work with you. Um, this will allow you to open up many doors. And what I would hope for is that you take what you've done here and make it sound even more natural, even more horrifying. Uh, like, like again, somebody said you could even like try to find a band and re-record this just for your own sake or like perform it live. Um, I think there is actually, like, like that's actually like a really great idea. Because there is something about this that is like, like, like you have something that a lot of people wish that they had. And I really hope that you can find people who will help bring that out in ways that you can't even imagine. And that's how I feel like, I feel like what you have here is you've, you've shown that you have the potential to make something that is next level, mind blowing, truly horrifying based off the ideas here. For that reason, it's a solid six for me. Um, a good listen that I feel like most people, again, like you should show this to people. It'd be like, this is what I can do. And they will be impressed. Here it is on album of the year. Yep. Um, after this, I think it's good that we take a, a short break. Listen to something hopefully calming. 